Adrian, you're a relatively young, but certainly an accomplished rider in the sport of dressage. I want to ask you, how do you think your youthfulness has helped you? Well, I, I touched a little bit, you know, on Wizard and I learning together, and I think he's kind of a strong-headed, uh, got a little bit of an opinion sometimes, especially when we came together, um, when Debbie McDonald gave me the chance to start riding him. Mm -hmm. And I think you kind of had to take everything he did with a grain of salt. You know, you couldn't get too upset. Sometimes he's great, sometimes he's not great, and we'd kind of learn together, and you have to let it roll off your back. And I think, you know, maybe that's something that... I was naive enough to not let any of it bother me, so I just kept on going. <laughs> Innocence at that age, yes. yeah. Um, as a competitor, I want to talk to you, how do you get into that headspace to be able to compete? I'm sure, I mean, specifically at the Olympics, nerves must play a huge factor. So in other words, how do you control those nerves? How do you get into that headspace? I think the hardest part for me, I've been pretty lucky, I've never had, you know, horrible issues with suffering from nerves, but mm -hmm. I think the hardest part is always, you know, before you get on, you know, you've got all those hours to yeah. kill, especially you're at the Olympics with one horse, and so for me it's kind of a matter of keeping myself focused on other stuff, you know, go watch the other, the other rides, go enjoy London, go do stuff so that you're not just sitting there stewing on your one, exactly. you know, you know what to do, and by the time you get in the saddle, then it's, it's everything's kind of cleared in your head at that yeah. point you have something else to focus on you've got this horse this animal you've got to pay attention to so once your foot's and you know legs over that saddle i think it's pretty easy to just get back in the groove of doing what you know how to do agreed so the waiting that's the hardest part yep. sometimes. <laughs> your horse wizard you've been riding him since 2006. how has wizard changed over the years and what what's his temperament like the thomases bought wizard as a five-year-old from the netherlands um, and he was very talented, very big, athletic, he is big. strong-willed <laughs> creature. <laughs> and uh, he was quite a fiery little thing. Just physically, we we're height-wise matched a little bit better than, than Debbie and Wizard were. You know, her being five, you know, just over five feet, me being almost six feet, and he's 17 one hands. And, wow. And so she gave me the, the chance to sit on him, and we just kind of seemed to click mm -hmm. right from the beginning. and. It's been quite a journey with him, he, but I think he's changed a lot. He used to be, you know, very hot tempered, very almost aggressive if you'd come at him, you know, it was like, no, he's going to do it his way and you couldn't come at him head on. So you had to kind of learn different avenues and, and figure out how do we approach this so that we can get him working with us instead of working against us. And I think it's taken a lot of years, but I think he's really changed and starting to build trust in a better relationship. Absolutely. And that's great. And I think that certainly occurs over time. How has your understanding of horse psychology made you a better competitor? I mean, that's an excellent question. And I think really what people don't understand a lot of time about our sport is half of it is psychology. Mm -hmm. um, because you've got this animal that you can't just explain things to. So mm -hmm. you've got to really learn how to work with them. And I think the more horses you're given the chance to work with, the greater your toolbox becomes, the more ways you learn to approach things. I really think horses are just like kids, not, you know, we're starting to figure out now in our systems that <laughs> not all kids learn exactly the same way. Agreed. Um, there's kids that can be brilliant if you approach them the right way and you've got to find what makes sense to them, what gets them, you know, gets them going and what works for them. And I think horses are the same way. And just the more, the more horses you've got experience with, whether or not they're dressage horses, Western horses, little beginner, cheap horses, expensive horses, it's all, you know, the same psychology. It's how, what's, what does this horse thrive on? You know, what's the best way to get, to get him to understand and want to work for us? How did you get that experience? You know, I think it's hours in that you put in with an mm. animal. I grew up on a little cattle ranch. We had horses from the time I was little and that's where I was, you know, from the time the sun was up, I was out with the horses in the morning and then I, I really got into horses. I started eventing through the United States Pony Club, which was wonderful. Um, organization that taught you a lot of the horsemanship skills and everything and mm -hmm. I never had a you know super fancy horse and I would be on and off between horses they'd been hurt or this or that but I would still you could go and show up at the, and I'd watch the other kids take their lessons and I'd kind of sit around and wait for a horse to be naughty <laughs> when a horse <laughs> would start being naughty then they'd say okay Adrian hop on now you can get a lesson and so then you gotta you know there you go you gotta go get your lesson for the day and so you learned a lot you know, just by throwing your leg over whatever you could ride at the time and putting the hours in the saddle. Experience, but I mean, I've heard, I mean, you have that knack to really be able to work with some of these problematic horses. Is that true? I, I mean, I've had a lot for sure. And I think hopefully, you know, you try to approach everything from a way that try to think of it from the horse's point of view. And if something's not yeah. working, it's up to you to change it. It's not up to the horse to change the way it thinks. It's up to you as a trainer to find a new avenue to make them understand what you want. What is your favorite aspect to training others 
and what specifically gives you the most satisfaction of, and, and joy of doing so? I love teaching. I do a lot of teaching. I've done it since, um, I mentioned earlier, I was came up through the United States Pony Club system, and yep. a lot of that is emphasis back on teaching um, younger upcoming riders, mm -hmm. and I've always enjoyed that, and I love working, you know, everyone from the kids to the adult amateurs to the other professionals. I think it's just really exciting when you see that that little what I call a light bulb moment or that spark yeah. go off like, oh, I get it, you know, that <laughs> part. And that's what keeps you going in this sport is every day you, you think you finally get it and then you realize you don't because then you learn more the next day and then <laughs> you keep going. But it's just all these little challenges and little victories every day that it's really fun to watch someone else, you know, come across them in their own time. Sure. Adrian, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to meet with us. And I wish you the best of luck uh, in all of your endeavors. Thanks for having me.